Welcome back to Journal Sunshine. Today I'm going to be doing a stationery and journaling supply haul. This was from Stationery Pal. I've worked with them before. This is actually the second time they have gifted me a bunch of products that I've gotten to choose, which I appreciate greatly because I am honest with my reviews and point out flaws when I see them just so you know what you're gonna get if you decide to buy something from their website. And right now they have a back to school sale that's going on. A lot of their items are 50 to 70% off. Off. and if you use my code journal sunshine it normally gets you 12% off but right now until August 31st it will actually get you 18% off so that code will also earn me a small commission if you use it to purchase something and that is it's going to go right back into feeding my stationary habit here on the channel so I can share more exciting things with you so just like last time, they sent a bunch of little random cute things in here that I didn't order, which was really fun and made me smile. Also, there is a ton of confetti in here and I shamelessly collected it to possibly put in my art journal in the future. The colors were really fun, there were some metallics in there, so, you know. <laughs> You can spot someone who journals if they are collecting paper things and saving them that everyone else would throw away. I am going to sort these items into categories so you can skip around in the chapters in case you're really excited about one particular type of product, but I'm starting off with kind of a weird one. This is the Click and Go Faber-Castell water pot for people who paint. Um, I don't do a ton of painting, but I've been trying to do it more often, and so this is like a little foldable pot that you can put water in, which I think is really cool, good for traveling. And so that's what it looks like when it's popped out there. You can fit quite a lot of water in there and then you can just kind of squish it back together in order to make it small to fit in your bag. The next item I got was the Kokuyo Dot Liner Petite Size and I thought that this was so cute. I love glue tape. I love that you don't have to wait for it to dry and it's very sticky and usually it's permanent. Um, so I thought this is a really small one. The one thing I don't like about glue tape is that it's tricky to travel with it because it's usually kind of large. So I had never seen one this small before. So I bought this thinking it would be good for traveling. This is what it looks like next to the Plus Norano Pod glue tape and next to the Tombow Mono Dots Adhesive, which is my favorite glue tape at the moment. They also sent me this washi tape that's shaped like a roll of stamps, which I thought was really cute. And it also reminded me of a funny story. Recently, I was at the post office mailing something and there was somebody in the line ahead of me who was attempting to mail a package using some stamps that I guess they had found on a desk somewhere in their house. And it turned out that they were not stamps, they were stickers, decorative stamp-shaped stickers. <laughs> And here's another roll of washi tape. This is a rainbow grid that I thought was really cool. Um, it doesn't really give you a good indication of what it looks like when it's on the roll like this, so I am gonna kind of pull off a piece to show you, but I thought it was a really cool. I have used this a couple of times since opening this package and the white background blends in with the paper a little bit, as long as it's white paper, but I thought that the rainbow grid lines were really unique and it adds a fun little pop of color without being too bold. And then for when I do want a pop of color, I went for this kind of berry colored grid and I don't normally go for this color, but it spoke to me for whatever reason, um, so I got that. I also got this set of washi dot stickers. These had been selling out on their website and so every time I went to look through to decide what I wanted, the different colors that I had originally chosen were gone. So <laughs> it must be a popular item, but I did like that this had a variety of colors and I'm excited to use them. I've seen some really cool planner pages where folks color code using stickers like this. So I've got some ideas. We'll see how it turns out. The next category of items are scrapbooking papers and I got a whole bunch and they are all really good quality. The last time, if you remember my previous stationary pal haul, I had a little bit of an issue with some of them turning out with a pixelated print um, and I did let them know about that and they were looking into it. So these ones I didn't have any problems with any of the prints and you'll see I'm opening them all up to show you what's in them and just to get a good look at them myself and none of them were pixelated. So I was very happy about that. This one, I believe, is the ticket-themed vintage scrapbooking paper kit that they have on their website, and they have like a 
variety of different paper sizes in here from little mini stamps to larger pieces that you can glue onto your journal pages. I also got a bunch of their vintage scrapbooking paper pads and this one I believe was called Postal. It has a bunch of stamps and all sorts of interesting old papers and definitely something that'll be fun for collaging on my journaling pages. Also maybe in my new art journal, we'll see. I like this size for scrapbooking paper. I don't, it's not too big, it's not too small. I can kind of put something nice in the corners and then have lots of space to write. The next one is what they call the art themed scrapbooking paper pad. I just kind of grabbed a whole bunch of these. I thought they would be fun to work with and I wasn't really sure what was in them. And then this one is the photography one, and I think this was probably my favorite. I love all the different film strips, and I just thought it was really cool. I've been enjoying this style lately. Another thing that I like about these paper pads is that they come with a few of each design, so you don't have to feel like you've wasted or messed up if you like have a favorite one that you're afraid to use. There are, I think, maybe three or four of each design in here, so you know, no worries on that end. Here is another separate one. This one is the lifestyle paper pad. And I thought some of the art in here was kind of cool as well. I am going to put links to all of the individual products that I have showed in this video, as many of them as I can fit <laughs> last time I hit my limit. But I have found that, that there aren't too many photos of the products on their website, so I hope that this video is helpful for you to get a closer look at what's actually in all of these different paper pads. And then one last paper pad, this one is the newspaper one, and this one has lots of cool torn edges and collages, a lot more neutral colors. I think this will go really well layered under other things. Um, I've been trying to practice more layering and things like that, and so I think all of these will be really great to use for that. The paper feels nice and the print looks good, so. The other thing that I will mention, and I apologize if there's confusion from when you're watching my video about this, but a lot of the names, at least in on the English site, are very repetitive and similar, and so I think I actually had asked for a different flower-themed scrapbooking paper kit than this one, but it's fine. I'm not paying for these. These were all gifted to me, so I'll take it and I'm sure I will use it eventually. But uh, that's this one. I think this is the Vintage Deco Scrapbooking Paper Kit, just looking at the different pictures on their website. So these next ones, I didn't really know what to expect with this particular product. I had decided not to get them last time and then they ended up back on my list this time because I was curious enough. But these are some really interesting like coupons, vintage -y looking coupons. And it, I wasn't sure entirely about it, but it is an entire pad full of these, the exact same coupon. And the reason why I initially thought maybe I won't get this is because I didn't know how many of these I would feasibly be able to use. So I may send these off in some care packages to friends because there are so many. Um, there was also this one, which was, I believe, called Delivery Ticket, and uh, same deal. They weren't expensive, but it is just a lot of the same thing. The paper was also a little bit thinner than I think I was expecting. I thought it would be more card-like, but for that price, not so bad. Um, and they are perforated, so also great. I also am not entirely sure which kit this one was. Um, I've been trying to match them up with the names that I sent them. It's possible that they were sold out of ones that I had asked for, and so they sent different ones um, since they were gifted, and I don't mind. Um, but then as a result, I don't know what to refer you to. <laughs> so this one was really cool. It has all these like little miniature letters, and I can definitely see myself using these in my scrapbooks. They are so cute. Look at all these little tiny pieces and no issues with the prints this time. I didn't have to throw away a single pixelated piece of paper. So I'm happy about that. I also ordered another one of this scrapbooking specialty paper bundle because I liked the one that they sent me last time so much. Um, you might have even seen me use it on one of my previous videos on this channel. It's like this lovely textured handmade paper, cute little pieces, and so I, I ordered another one because I found that I was nervous to use them, and that's not the point of these supplies. They are meant to be used, so now I have extra. So for stickers, I ended up really liking the Swatelier stickers that I got from my last stationary pal order, so I picked a bunch more. 
This set is called A Daily Something, and what I really like about their stickers is that they are teeny tiny. Some of them are larger, and a lot of them are very, very small. So they work really well in my passport size journal, which I've been enjoying more recently, as well as in my Hobonichi Weeks, where I don't want to take up too much of the page. This set is called Daily, by the way. Speaking of planning, this is kind of a planning one, but in my Hobonichi Weeks planner, I don't like to take up too much of the page because it's already pretty small and I fit a lot of stuff on those pages when I'm writing and planning. And so I want a little bit of a detail, something colorful, something that will just add a little bit of personality to the page. This one's called Home Sweet Home. They also vary in the type of paper or plastic that they use for the stickers. Some of them are really thin, some of them are a little bit thicker, some are paper, some are plastic, some are clear, some are not. So that's something that it's a little hard to tell from looking at it on the website, but I, in general, have been enjoying all of them. This set is called I Like Coffee. I've been using this one a lot. These are kind of like a thicker card material, um, which you can't tell by looking at it because it's on a clear background. So um, just one of those things that you figure out once you get them, but they all are really lovely quality. I highly recommend this particular brand, and I honestly probably will order some more from Stationery Pal if they end up wanting to do another order with me. This is their Reminisce set, and what I like about this one is that some of the stickers have a gold foil detail on them, which I think looks really nice, and um, yeah, I have already used up most of these since I've filmed this video. <laughs> I like them a whole lot, but yeah, look, look at the little shiny details. So cute. This next set is called Deco Drawing, and this is one of the ones that's clear but very, very thin. Um, so they're a little bit tricky to get off of the page without a set of tweezers. Something that I like to do is cut these sheets in half so that I can fit them in a little folder in my passport size traveler's notebook. The next two sets of stickers are my go-tos, the bigger clear stickers that I like to use when I am journaling in my larger notebooks. This set has all these little crochet bits and little bits of thread and lace. It's kind of a crafty themed set. It also has these really cute little hedgehogs, little needle felted hedgehogs in here, which I'll show you in a second, but they are my favorite <laughs> that come in this set. Oh, little teddy bears. They're adorable. There they are, those little guys. Look how cute! <laughs> and then adding to my collection of my rainbow of floral stickers, this is the pink set. And I really, these are my go-to. I love putting clear floral stickers on my journal spreads. I like to layer other things underneath them because they're an interesting shape and you can see through parts of them. You just have to be careful because some of these are less opaque than others. And so if you put something really dark or very colorful underneath them, sometimes you can see what's under this, the clear sticker itself. I also bought another one of these teeny tiny traveler's notebooks because I have ideas for them, but they're so small that you kind of have to choose one idea and stick with it. At least I feel like I have to. <laughs> um, but you just, you can clip this little charm onto it and then you can attach it to a bag or something. And so I've been just using one of them as decoration. But for this one, I actually, my kids saw it and thought this is the cutest thing I've ever seen. And um, I told him that he could write a message for me in it. So I gave him my finest fine tip fine liner pen and he wrote I love you on the first page which is so sweet. It is a bit of a challenge to write in these though. I also picked up a set of these curved tip tweezers. Um, I had a straight tip one from last time and uh, I've been trying to get better with using these. They definitely take some practice but especially for the really tricky teeny tiny stickers on some of those Swatelier sticker sets. Something like this has been pretty helpful for me. And now moving on to pens and other writing instruments. I have been planning to make a video about this particular pen, but these are my favorite gel pen. I've started writing with these almost more than I write with my fountain pens. This is the Uniball 1F. They are the slightly fancier version of the Uniball 1. They have these kind of weighted metal tips that make them really nice to write with. And both of these have black ink in them, even though they are different colors, but I love those gel pens. I also got a bunch of the new mild liner colors that came out. I had already gotten the new blue and the new olive one, and so when I saw that Stationery Pal had more of them, 
I went and got some of these. So if you don't know about these, these are highlighters. They come in beautiful colors, but one end is this kind of bold chisel tip and the other end is more of a fine-ish point. So I can actually write with it or draw lines and do all sorts of things using the same inks as the highlighters. Since I was curious, I went ahead and did a little bit of a writing test with these ones. And so this one is the Mild Dusty Pink. I don't normally love pink, but I thought that this was such a nice kind of chill pink <laughs> and I already have a whole bunch of mild liner colors so I thought this would be nice to round out my collection. The next one is the new mild cool gray. I do have their old gray but it is a warmer gray. This one has more of a blue tone to it and it is a beautiful gray. I really like using this one to highlight things in my Hobonichi Weeks. It is just such it is the opposite of the bright neon highlighter colors that come to mind when you think about highlighters and I just love that and then the third one is very very light lighter than I was expecting but I'm sure I will find a use for it this is the mild cream it's hard to read but I think when I need something really really subtle I think this will work just fine so I thought it would be a nice neutral that I could use so there are those three. If you would like to see a color comparison of my entire mild liner collection, I guess let me know. I'm sure there is a video out there like it already, but the next one is a fountain pen, which is very exciting. They don't have very many fountain pens on Stationery Pal, but this Platinum Preppy is one that has been recommended many, many times as a really good, really inexpensive fountain pen. This particular one is some sort of limited edition with Perpinep, it looks like, but um, I'm excited to try that out, get it all inked up. So since it is back to school time, even though I'm not going back to school, I thought this would be a good time to get a bunch of different pencil cases and pen cases because I love those. I can't resist them. I buy too many of them. This one is by Kokuyo and it's really cool because it kind of folds up from a really small pencil case to a larger one depending on what you need to carry. So I gave it a try and it does pop open really easily. It's a little bit trickier to get it back up into the smaller, more compact version, but it does work out. And you can fit quite a lot in here when it is in its larger form. <laughs> but when it is smaller, the little parts where it's all bunched up on the inside can actually be used to separate your supplies into different sections of the bag, which is really smart. I thought it might be a little annoying to have them bunched up in there, but you can actually use that to your advantage. Do you have any go-to pen cases or pencil cases like this? Um, I seem to always want to buy more. So they are, it depends on what I need them for and how much I'm fitting in them and whether I'm traveling with them or just using them to organize things on my desk. I am a big fan of the Delphonics pouch. I have made a video about that in the past, but it seems like I always want more. <laughs> Is that something you experience too? Okay, you get the idea. I'm gonna stop playing with this now. <laughs> Um, but the next one that I'm going to open up, I had actually seen in a bunch of different places and different websites. Um, I'm not sure. It says special on it, but I don't know what the brand is on this one. But I had seen this, like, pink outline with the black and white grid before, and I was curious what this one was actually like. And it's pretty cool, I think. It has this kind of top pocket, but also when you look at the inside, there is there are some pockets on the inside which are important. I really like to be able to separate things in different sections. And then if you look over here, there are some places where you can put pens, but the way that you actually access that panel is by unzipping the side. And this is a really smart design too because there's this little flap here keeping whatever is in the rest of the pouch from rolling out, but then you can put kind of some of your favorite pens in these little spots here. And I'm going to tuck some of the mild liners and stuff into those just to show you what that looks like when it's all zipped up. But I just thought this was a really smart really unique design and I like it because I think if I'm traveling I can unzip this side portion and leave it open and it'll make it really easy for me to access the things that are in it while I'm actively journaling. Just gonna go ahead and fill up the rest of this pouch just for example's sake to show you how much stuff will fit in here and it does fit quite a lot if you take a look at that. And then when you zip up the side this is what it looks like on the inside. So it kind of tucks those pens in there, keeps them in one spot, they're not rolling around everywhere, and you're all good to go. I really like this one. I have a feeling I'm gonna use it a whole bunch. 
And the last thing in here, I went with a big item for some reason. It wasn't expensive, but I just kind of threw it in there because I cannot resist tote bags either. <laughs> so this is a canvas tote bag that has a bunch of pockets and the yellow color just kind of jumped out at me. It's very bright and sunshiny and I thought that might be cute. It's lined with black fabric on the inside, which makes it a little hard to see, but there is an inside zipper pocket and then there is a zipper on the top, but it only covers kind of the middle section of the tote bag though it does have so there are holes here I guess you could reach in and grab something if quickly if you needed to but then I figured out that there are these little snaps along the top and when you do that the holes become less large here so less likely that stuff's gonna fall out if you snap these shut I'm not entirely sure what the purpose of this is it's just maybe a cool design thing but I don't know and then it has this big pocket on the front where you can kind of put small items that you want to be able to access quickly. And then there's also this semi-hidden little zipper here where you can stick small things. Someone could probably reach into there. <laughs> um, I usually prefer for my hidden pockets to be on the inside or on the side that's close to my body when I hold it over my shoulder, but you know. So that is everything that came in this order from Stationery Pal that they generously gifted to me. If you end up wanting to buy anything from Stationery Pal, I've put links in the description below, and you can also use my code Journal Sunshine for normally 12% off, but right now until August 31st, it is up to 18% off. I also would like to know in the comments, please let me know if you have recently purchased a stationary item that you're really excited about. What's like your new thing that you want to tell me about that you think I should know about? Because I love to hear about that sort of thing and I love to chat with you all when the videos are done. So thank you so much for coming by and listening to me talk about stationery. I love to do it and I love to find people who are as into it as I am. So have a good rest of your day and I will see you next time.